Hello everybody, my name is Jennifer Maker. Tonight we're talking all about Cricut Infusible Inks and the great maker show and tell. So Cricut just announced this really cool new product called Infusible Ink that I am so excited to tell you about. And it's gonna change the way many of us make t-shirts, tote bags, and home decor. So if you've ever been frustrated by the way iron-on vinyl isn't as durable as you want it to be, or it doesn't layer the way that you'd like, or has all the edges, or as you layer it, it becomes heavy, then you're gonna love infusible ink. Because what infusible ink really is, is a really easy way to bring sublimation ink to those of us at home who don't want to buy a fancy sublimation ink printer, whether it's because it costs a fair amount of money or because we just don't want yet another thing in our craft rooms to take up space, right? Right? So I am so, this is just, this is very cool because I got a box of it today. As you all know, because I told everybody about it because I can't keep quiet about it. So I have a box of infusible ink goodies that I got from Cricut and I have waited until tonight to look into it and see what we have so that we could do it together. Because several of you wanted to know, like, we're kind of bummed out. Like, you would like to get a box too. And I totally get that. So we're going to do this together so we can play together with this. And so the Infusible Ink products won't actually be available to buy for about a little over two weeks now. So they're going to become available to order online on uh, Sunday, June 16th only exclusively at Michael's online. And then you'll be able to go into the store. Sorry, I have a cough tonight, hang on. You'll be able to go into the store and get them uh, starting as early um, as Friday, June 21st. So June 16th for Michael's online and June 21st to actually get them in the stores. So we're going to look inside this box and see what Cricut sent. And then we're gonna go through each thing. And if we have time and the technology is working okay and we're not having issues with our live feed because after all, technology, right guys? Um, I will actually cut something out with you and I would be happy to answer your questions and everything. So are you ready for me to open the box? Yeah, let's do this. Okay, so here we go. We have this awesome box and I did open it at the bottom already. So, you know, just so you know, we're not going to open that part together. So it says, hey, let's heat things up. Awesome. Okay, so there's an envelope here with a cute little sticker. I'm just going to, I guess, oh, there we go. I was going to tear it. I'm one of those people that just rips open wrapping paper on Christmas morning. Yeah, I don't even care. So inside we've got some cute little cards. I'm sure that these are from Cricut's media department encouraging me to share it, which of course is what we're doing tonight, right guys? So it is ways to make all the things that they have in here. So it's all the instructions for all, which is awesome, by the way. I don't know if you guys have been to the website infusibleink.com. It's actually really awesome. They have tons of um, questions and answers there and tutorials and everything. It's an excellent resource. All right. Got some paper. We'll just get this out of the way. All right. So I see. Awesome. We have Cricut um, infusible ink transfer sheets. So this is really cool. These are 12 inch by 12 inch. And it looks like this comes two to the box. And there's two different colors here. We've got the pattern, uh, pattern like it looks like a kind of tropical pattern and a navy blue. And then we also have a box of red, um, also 12 inch by 12 inch thing. Now, my understanding is that there's a ton of different colors and patterns. And um, I think I, there's like 28 different boxes. So there's a ton of them, and I'm sure that Cricut will come up with so much more stuff. So there's really a lot of cool things. And I see your questions, guys, and I'm totally going to answer. Like I see, I'm going to answer a question right now. So someone asked, how many impressions can you get out of one uh, transfer sheet? You can only get one, but you don't have to use the whole thing, right, guys? We don't have to use the entire 
sheet. We can trim it and we can save our scraps and we can be wise about it. But the reason why you only get one image transfer is because it's actually moving the ink from the sheet onto your material. What's so cool about infusible ink is that it doesn't just lay on top of your material the way vinyl does. It actually infuses itself, which of course is why they're calling it infusible ink. It infuses itself into, let's roll this down, right into your base material. And when you heat it up with your easy press, it actually turns into a gas. And then when it cools down, it turns into a solid again and it becomes a permanent part of your material. That's what's so cool about it. So um, I know that it's important not to touch the um, transfer sheets too much because the oils from your hand could cause an issue. So we're going to not try not to touch them. And I want to note something right now. So you'll notice that there's actually quite a bit of difference. Can you guys see this? between these two. So this one, the box is super vibrant, but the transfer sheet itself uh, doesn't look to be quite as vibrant, does it? So my understanding is that the vibrancy comes out after we heat it. So we will see if that's true, right? So I'm gonna close this up in there, but there's two sheets in there, can you see that? All right, I'm not gonna open the other one up right now, but we're gonna look and see what else they sent. Okay, so they sent a mini lint roller, which is awesome. I actually bought one just for this project. Isn't that cute? It's all pink and everything. But you need a lint roller to make sure that your material is clean before you apply your transfer to it. So that's why they sent one, which is cool. They sent Cricut infusible ink pens, and I know there's different ones. This is the basic, and I'm not sure, this is the pens and there's also markers. So they sent pens and this is so cool because I am so excited to, to try these because I can use my Cricut to draw something and I can then color it in and then I can transfer it. So it's like an adult coloring book, but we can put it onto a t-shirt or onto a tote bag. I mean, how cool is that guys? I am so, I am so interested in doing that. And then heat resistant tape. I'll be honest, I'm not sure what we use this for yet. Maybe it's for keeping things in place. Probably when we do a project, we're gonna find out. And we have four round coasters and these are ceramic. I think, I think that they're ceramic and they must have some coating on them. It says ceramic coaster blanks. And I wanna note this symbol right up here. So Cricut says that this symbol will appear on things that are that they guarantee will work with their products. So we don't know yet if it's going to work with other things. And obviously I haven't tried it, but as you all know, I try pretty much everything. So I will be trying it and I will let you know. I am told that if I try it, I won't be happy with the results. So, and that may be. And if it's the case, I will certainly tell you all as well. And <clears throat> we have a Cricut tote bag which is 19 inches by 14 inches. So that's cool. Again, it has the symbol on it. And we have a Cricut Infusible Ink Women's T-shirt blank. So that's cool. I wonder what it feels like. I'm gonna open this up. So I'm really curious, cause I know like, I will admit I am not a big fan of polyester and you really have to be using uh, for sublimation ink to work, you need to be using a fabric that has a high polyester count for this to work. This is how sublimation ink works. But you know, I gotta say guys, this is really soft. This actually, uh, now I wouldn't say it's cotton. I wouldn't be confused with the cotton. I'm pretty good about fibers, but this is not a really shiny uh, polyester feel at all. It actually has a brushed feel to it. It feels actually pretty darn good. So this is cool. So it says 95% polyester, 5% spandex. So you can see that up there. All right, so this is what we got, guys. What do you think? Should we make something? They also included some butcher paper and some white paper. So we, we need both of these to do this as well. 
because while I haven't done this before, I definitely did my homework, guys. So the butcher paper is necessary for laying on top of our transfer when we heat it up. The paper is what, um, is that right? Yeah, whatever. I don't know. We'll go through it together. And we need the paper. I believe the paper is to protect our mat or one of the, one of the two ways. We'll see together. Um, but they included that for me. Isn't that convenient? In fact, I believe that there is butcher paper in, in here. Let's look and see. I think that they include some butcher paper when they give you the transfer. Yes. So you don't have to go out and buy butcher paper if you don't have it. They include it. I actually bought a giant roll two days ago just in case. So I'm actually all set. But it's really awesome that they include the butcher paper right in each of the rolls of transfer so that you're all ready to go. All right. So... Let me answer a couple questions. I see something here. So Lottie says, do you need to wash the shirt before you use the infusible ink? Nope, mm -mm, you don't. It's all ready to go. We're going to work on the t-shirt and do a test on it. So I'm going to set this over here, put everything else back for now. And we're going to hop over to, I guess, which one should we use, guys? Should we use... The red or the pattern. The pattern might be more interesting because I really want to see if it, um, how it changes as we heat it. So I'm just going to use that. You guys are welcome to tell me otherwise, but I think that we should see what the pattern looks like. All right. And in addition to the butcher paper and everything, we're going to need some, actually I'll go through everything together with you. So I won't even talk about that quite yet. Pattern. Okay, good. You guys all agree with me. Pattern it is. Can we take that, Greg? Thank you. All right. All right. So we're going to use the pattern one. Okay. All right. So I am going over to Cricut Design Space right now so that we can do this. So I'm going to share. There we go. So here's Cricut Design Space. And we're going to make this really simple. I'm going to make a new project. And I am just going to make a heart. We're going to make two hearts. I'm going to do one heart using the original first generation Easy Press, and the second heart will be using my Easy Press 2 Mini. So we can see how it works for both of them. So there's one heart, and that's one and a half, so that's fine. And we'll just do this other one, and we'll put it right here. So super easy peasy, right? Alrighty. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and click make it, open up my Cricut. Now you use your regular premium fine point blade when you cut out the infusible ink transfer sheets. And I'm going to click and drag this over a bit just so we have a little extra space. But I don't want to be careful. I don't want to waste my transfer sheets. I've only got four guys, so we need to be really conservative here. I have four to last me over two weeks. It's not going to be easy. I'm going to tell you that. So I'm going to click continue and connect my Cricut. And in the meantime, while we're waiting for that, we're going to talk about what we need for this project. So I've pulled up um, the, in fact, what I'm on right now is actually how to do the, the infusible ink transfer sheets with the sample swatch. I don't have a sample swatch, but we're still going to do a sample on the shirt. I always recommend that you test you don't want it. This is, this is how we don't ruin our expensive shirts as we test. All right. So we need a Cricut, which we have. This is my Cricut Explorer right here. A standard grip mat, which I also have right here. Let's see. We also need our Easy Press, which I've got over here. I've got my original Easy Press here and uh, my Easy Press 2 here. Hopefully you guys can all see that. I know it's in a smaller screen. Uh, we need um, an easy, the Cricut Easy Press mat and our, which we have right here. So here's my mat. And by the way, they really highly recommend that you use the Easy Press mat because that's what they say, it makes a difference. So like normally with iron on vinyl, it's okay to use like a folded towel 
but apparently it really makes a difference and this is made for it. So, you know, we'll experiment in the future, but we're definitely using my easy press mat for now. I really like it anyways. We're going to need the transfer sheet itself, which is in here. So I'm going to just kind of pull it out like this. Put this out of the way. And hey, look, they gave us, oh my gosh, this is the sample, guys. This is the sample swatch. I bet it comes in all of the, the rolls so that you can always test. That's awesome. Do you think it comes in all of them? Because now I'm really curious. We could look, open up, I'm going to totally open the box right now. Because I was really curious about this. Do you have that box? Thank you, Greg. Because I was all, I opened up the box and I was like, I thought that it talked about the sample swatch and I'm like, well, where's the sample swatch? But, and there wasn't one, but if it comes in every roll, then we can always test, always test guys. Yes, I can see that. Can you see that in there? There's totally a sample in every roll. This is awesome. Good job, Cricket. That's a big deal. Okay. Here you go. You can take that back. Thank you. All right. So we have our, our transfer sheet. And I'm just going to, and I will describe this later, but I'm going to get this other one out of the way so it's not. Well, there's a little note here that says, before you begin, please follow the directions at infusibleink.com. Awesome. Oh, and then our butcher paper is in here as well. So they give us butcher paper and the swatch. So that's great. That's very useful. Here, put that over there. Thank you. All right. So we've got our transfer sheet, our sample blank, blank swatch, which I can, I'm going to go ahead and use this now since we have this. We don't have to use our t-shirt at all. Um, it feels exactly the same as the t-shirt, by the way, guys. Butcher paper, which we have over here. Butcher paper, which, by the way, if anyone isn't familiar with what butcher paper is, it is a, um, well, you know, it's used by butchers, right? But it's not wax paper. It's not freezer paper. It is very specific. So don't confuse those two things because it'll make a difference. And uh, cardstock we have here as well. Our lint roller. And we have some scissors. And we have some tweezers. So we are all ready to go. And, of course, design space. All right. So let's go back on over to, now we'll share my screen again. And we will go over back to Cricut Design Space. Click Make It. Um, and you know, it's like, so like Iron On Vinyl, the designs get transferred in mirror image onto, they get cut out in mirror image and then you flip them over to put them onto your material. So it's very important that you mirror your designs when you do any infusible ink projects. So you just toggle the mirror um, you know, icon over here and the icon, the little toggle button. And I'm going to slide that over and we're going to try this again. There we go. All right. So we're going to click browse all materials and uh, you can find it under iron on. It's right here, infusible ink transfer sheet, or you can search for it, but I have it here. So I'm going to go ahead and click it and We'll continue. So remember, it's got our note here. Make sure mirror is turned on and iron on material is face shiny side down on the mat. And remember, I just did a video on how to identify what the shiny side is and how to use this. And it, it works the same way with the infusible ink transfer sheets, I'm pretty sure. I guess I don't know for sure because I'm just looking at them, but I'm, it's got a shiny side too. So it does, it, it, and I will show you. So this is all ready to go. So I'm going to switch back over to our directions right here. So make sure that we do everything right. And then we're going to switch back to the overhead view. So the, the first step is to place the infusible ink transfer sheet onto a standard grip mat liner side down. So here is the sheet itself. And again, it looks so different than what it looks like on the box. Can I see that box again, Greg? Just so that everyone can see. Yeah. So, I mean, this is a really big difference. So, like, I mean, this is like turquoise. And this is like a light blue, right? Big difference. 
It even has a, you know, actually it has a graduation. So gra graduation, gradi gradation. <laughs> and it's darker here and it's lighter here. So, all right. And then, so this feels to me like there's plastic on. So this side here, this is the side that's going to transfer. I'm trying to be careful not to touch it too much. I mean, I think that there's going to be a limit, you know, but probably I don't want to sit here and touch it a lot. But so this side feels like paper to me. Totally feels like regular paper. This side is looks like a piece of transfer tape or um, so, like what we'd have on the back of iron on vinyl. That's what it looks like to me. And it's, I mean, it's actually feels pretty sturdy and thick, but this definitely feels like just like paper. All right, so we wanna place it shiny side down, right? And yes, I'm gonna put the entire sheet on here. I wouldn't normally do that, I'd normally cut it, but this might make it easier to preserve the scraps later on. So make sure we line that up like always. And obviously you can't help but touch it a little bit. Let me get my brayer out, maybe that'll help. I know it's not on there straight guys, but we're just doing two hearts up here, so it's gonna be fine. <laughs> I have cut out lots of stuff. All right, so we've got it on our mat. Liner side down, right? So that means we've got the paper side up. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in and load it in. We've got our design all ready to go. All right, and so we're, we're ready to go. You guys ready? Let's do this. So we're gonna cut this out. Oh yeah, I'm not in Cricut, there we go. It's always like there's, I don't know if you guys ever noticed just like a slight delay if you don't have that window open. I always try to have it open, but it wasn't because I was working on my other page. All right, that was easy. So I can see two heart shapes cut out there. All right, so now it says to remove the cut design from the mat and trim away the unused parts. So I'm gonna flip it over like I always do. This is always the best way to remove something from a mat, in my opinion. I'm gonna tuck this under my Cricut and let's trim away the parts that we don't want and put it back into the box for more experimentation later. So I see the hearts right here. Can you zoom in on this part, Greg? trying to see them if I'm getting them right it's kind of hard to see ah there they are okay I'm gonna try to be conservative guys so there's one heart and there's the other because again it's gotta last me two weeks all right let's set this off to the side all right so we now we have two little hearts and I am going to cut them and separate them right now. All right, so now it's time to weed. Now they say that you want to gently roll your design so the cut lines separate and they call it cracking, which I have never done anything like this before. So it makes it easier to grasp and remove the excess paper. So, um, so I'm just going to do what they say and kind of roll it in my fingers like this. Of course, you might be using a tiny, it might be, I can kind of see it though. You can see like right here, it's kind of, you see that right there? It's kind of separating from away from it. We want the, of course, our heart to stay and the rest of it to go away. So obviously it's going to take some figuring out how best to do this. So. I think it's supposed to crack when you do it. I don't hear any cracking, so maybe it's just too small. So let's see if I can get this off without touching the rest of it too much. Uh, yeah, I don't know how. 
maybe I need to use a weeding tool. Except they didn't say to use a weeding tool. So um, let's see here. Thank you. You guys know how to do this? <laughs> try the weeding tool. Okay, thank you, Wanda. All right, we're going to try the weeding tool. I don't want to mess it up. Oh, yeah, it's just like paper. So if I can just get a part of it off. All right, so maybe the issue is it didn't cut all the way through, guys. So maybe that's why I'm having a problem. Because right now, when I lift it up, it's not coming away. So can you, I don't know if you can see that. So it didn't cut all the way through. So that's a bummer. Yeah, that's the problem. It didn't cut all the way through. So we're going to check our blade. It's good for everyone to see. So this happens and we just did a tiny little bit, so no big deal. This is what I do when we have blade problems. I get out my handy ball of aluminum foil. Right, so there might be something on my blade. I just did all those iron-on vinyl shirts. For all we know, there's like something on there. Uh, who knows, right? And all I do is I use this to clean the blade, and I just put it into the aluminum ball like 50 times or so. And if there's any little bits of glitter or paper or vinyl or whatever, it will take care of the issue. And uh, this is how I do it. And this is how I always manage to cut out my stuff. I know you guys are always like, how does she get all those intricate cuts? Well, this is how we do it, guys. All right. So blade is cleaned. I know my mat's fine. I didn't move around my mat. But we're going to change the pressure when we cut it this time. So let's cut it again. Remember, I make the mistakes. So you guys don't have to. Can I have that sheet, Greg? Thank you. And this time I am gonna just cut off the part I need right now. Let's check design space to see how much it actually wants us to cut. Um, four inches. So if I do four inches, that will be enough. A little bit more. Okay, thank you. Alrighty, let's put this back on the mat. Allison says, can you upload your own? Can you upload your own designs to design space? Totally you can, Allison. I, that's what I do on my blog. You should totally go to my blog at jennifermaker.com and you will see all of the amazing things. In fact, if you go to jennifermaker.com slash SVGs, I tell you how to upload designs to Design Space. All right, we're gonna load this again, but this time I'm changing. I'm gonna switch this over so you can see what I'm doing. I am changing my pressure to more, okay? So we're gonna have more pressure and our blade is clean. All right, let me switch this back over. And we're gonna cut it again. Uh, Missy says, all the blanks they sent are light color. Do you know if you can apply a infusible ink to dark colors like white onto a black t-shirt? I know without even doing this that you cannot because that's not how sublimation ink works. It needs a white or light colored um, base material for it to, for the colors to be vibrant. Otherwise, it just won't, doesn't work. If you want to use a black or dark colored shirt or other material, you're going to want iron-on vinyl instead of infusible ink. Infusible ink does not replace iron-on vinyl, guys. It's just another tool in our toolbox for awesome stuff. And when you need to make something really permanent that isn't going to go bad before your material does, for example, let's say you're making an heirloom quilt. You want it to last several generations. Something like infusible ink on the panels is going to be so much better than iron-on vinyl. All right. Let's see how it worked this time, shall we? So I have increased my pressure and I cleaned my braids blade. So let's do that whole rolling thing. Try not to touch it too much. I can totally see it lifting off already right here. Can you see that? Right? 
So that was the problem. <laughs> that was totally the problem. So it's lifting off at the edges. Oh, I heard a little crack there. <laughs> There's a little, little tiny crack. Okay. So I'm still not entirely sure how I'm supposed to weed this. I never say to use a weeding tool. Like, I'm not sure how we're supposed to do this without a weeding tool. Maybe it's just magic. I mean, I guess you can see right there that it's, uh, but still, how do I get that part, just the back part off? All right. So I'm just going to use it at the bottom here, I guess, and try to make a little, all right, and peel that away there and try to get the, all the negative space off. There we go. So there you can hear the cracking now, can you? There we go. So that came off much easier once I had my blade cleaned and my pressure sent some more. All right, awesome. So I'm gonna cut these in half because we're gonna do two tests. One with the Easy Press first generation, which is my, I have the Wisteria one. I know you can't see it right now because we're kind of zoomed in and the Easy Press two. All right, so let me continue on with my directions because we're gonna do this to the letter. Oh, it says to use tweezers to remove negative pieces from around. So not a weeding tool to use tweezers. So there we go, use tweezers. All right, so now it's time to apply it to our swatch. And I'm gonna cut our swatch in half. So I can figure out what I did with it. Oh, here it is, okay. And, or maybe, let's see. Um, I'm going to cut it in quarters. I'm going to be super conservative guys because I just, I don't know what to say, but we need this to last. And if for some reason our test doesn't go the way that we want, we're going to need to do some more. So this is going to be really tiny. <laughs> if it doesn't work out, we can always switch to the t-shirt. All right. And if, when you guys do your tests, you're going to want to use the whole swatch, okay? You're not going to want to be nuts like me and and uh, put it into four little sections because after all, there, there looks like there is one swatch per roll. So plenty to go around. All right, so this is what we're going to do. <laughs> our two little hearts. <laughs> okay, um, so we need to get our mat out. We're going to, I'm going to start, I'm going to um, turn on the... Um, we're going we're gonna to do the Easy Press 2 first. That's the one that all of the the you know the demo video show so uh, we're going to do that one first and then we'll do the easy press the other one all right so let's move these over here i'm totally saving these scraps too guys because just because it didn't cut out the heart i'm sure i could still do something with them all right so we need to place a piece of cardstock on top of our mat and it's to protect the surface from unwanted transfer I don't know about you guys, but I've totally accidentally transferred stuff to my mat before. I once totally ironed something. Um, I think it was the principal iron on. I totally messed it up and ruined my mat. So this is a great idea. All right, then we're going to put the swatch blank on top of the cardstock. So hopefully you guys can see that okay. All righty. And the next step is to, and it says, do not skip this step. It says to use a fresh adhesive. I'm gonna open up the one that they sent me because it'll be brand new and fresh. Sorry about the crinkling. Um, we're gonna, so yet it, it's really important from what I understand to make sure that your surface is free of lint um, if you're using a fabric or it's free of dust. If you're using like the, actually, I'm going to ask Greg to help me. Can you get that unwrapped for me? Thanks. Um, if you're using the coasters, you want it free of dust because those things will interfere with the transfer. And I'm going to guess you could have some like negative white space in the spots where there's dust or dirt or debris or, or whatever. We don't want that. Okay, so we need to use our cute little lint roller to clean off our little swatch. I feel like I'm making like a doll 
the little dollhouse thing right now. This is like a little tablecloth for a table. All right. I cleaned it off. I'm sure there's no lint on that anywhere. <laughs> All right. Cover the swatch blank with butcher paper. So I'm just going to cut off a piece of this because this is actually a very big piece of butcher paper. We don't need quite so much. Oh, wait. I take that back. The instructions do say that you have to cover the whole um, the whole fabric surface and it's got to cover everything for your for your easy press. It's got to be like the same size, right? So I will cut off a bigger piece instead. Um, yeah. All right. Yeah, you want the butcher paper to cover the whole plate. The whole cover swatch blank with butcher paper. Because I think that this is for preheating. We're going to preheat it. Now we need to get the, the, the easy press on. All right. <clears throat> and yes, the butcher paper has to be larger than the easy press heat plate. Now we need to preheat it. Again, it says don't skip this step. All right. It says, <clears throat> turn this on. Now, it's, there is a guide for exactly what material you're using and, you know, everything, but we're following the tutorial for this, so we're just going to go with what it says here. It says to heat it to 385 degrees, so we're going to press the temperature there, and the easy press to go up to 400, whereas the easy press first generations don't go up that high, so that's significant. And we're going to preheat for 15 seconds. So I'll press my stopwatch and change that to 15 seconds. There we go. So we'll let that heat up. We want to make sure that it's heated up. And it says to use light, even pressure. So while it's heating up, I'm going to check to see if you guys have questions. Judy, I'm, gen I'm doing great. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. I love you. You are my new best friend. <laughs> you have no idea how nervous I was before I got on here to this video. I don't often do live videos. So we're going to do more though. So I have to get used to this. Judy says that the, does the butcher paper come with the sheets? Yes, there is butcher paper inside the roll of transfer sheets. So that's awesome. Oh, Heather, awesome. This is an awesome tip. So Heather says, if you hold the timer button down, it will go up in five seconds at a time. That's awesome. I never thought to do that. That is a great tip. Thank you, Kathy. You guys are so awesome. I really, truly appreciate you. Um, all right, we're almost there. So we're going to be preheating this for 15 seconds. All right, guys, ready? Let's do this. So I'm just going to put it right onto my surface, just straight down. We always want to do this. And it said light pressure. I press that button. Light pressure means, uh, you know, to me, that means one hand, right? I'm not really doing anything. I'm just leaving it here keeping it, making sure that it doesn't move. All right. Awesome. Okay. We have done that. So now we remove the butcher paper and we let the swatch cool. I remember I read this first and now it confused me so much. I'm like, but we're preheating it. Why are we letting it cool? So my understanding is that what we're doing is we're removing the moisture and wrinkles because you guys saw how it's curling up, right? So by doing that, we're getting it all nice and straight and we're getting any humidity out so that it actually transfers better. All right, so we're gonna wanna pl place the design face down on a swatch with the clear liner on top. Oops, I don't want that piece. So we're gonna use this one because this one's super cute. It still feels hot and it's polyester. This doesn't surprise me at all. Polyester in my, in my experience does stay hot a little longer. I wonder how long it takes to cool. That would be good to know, wouldn't it? So that we're not just guessing it and then touching it all the time. It's warm now. <laughs> Jesse, you forgot to turn your heat press off. I think you better go turn off your heat press. I remember one time I left it plugged in. I always unplug my irons and heat presses and I left it plugged in and I remembered as I was fall about to fall asleep and that freaked me out and I had to come downstairs. I had to get out of bed and come down and unplug it. Okay, this feels cool to me now. So we put it face down. So just, just, just so. so this is the face up 
part and this is the liner part. So see this shiny side? This is the liner side, also known as the carrier side, right? So in my video about iron on vinyl, I talk about the carrier side. This plastic is the, the carrier sheet. This is the design. So we're putting this down onto our fabric. And of course, if this were something that wasn't the same on both sides, it would be easier for us to see that it's mirrored right now. All right, so we've got that on our on our um, fabric. All right, so we cover it with butcher paper, just like before, all right? And again, it's gotta be larger than that heat plate. And now we are going to press for 40 seconds at 385 degrees with the Easy Press 2. If we were using the original one, it would be 120 seconds at 360 degrees, which I'm guessing is its maximum. I don't actually know. So I'm gonna change this right now to uh, 40. Look at that, see, can you guys see that going up <laughs> in five degrees? There we go. All right, so 385 degrees for 40 seconds. Okay, ready? Let's do it. So you wanna just place it on there. You don't wanna move it back and forth like you might iron something. It needs to stay perfectly still. This is really important. I've seen this in uh, mentioned many times and it doesn't say, oh yeah, we're using even light pressure just like before. So one hand is light pressure. Sh Shanna, Shana, sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, says we could tape it down so it doesn't move and you're absolutely right and that makes sense now, the tape. So tape, like I, I totally get that now and I'm gonna experiment with that later on when we're not on a live video because you know, I can only make so many mistakes live and like live, live, <laughs> lived. All right. So I have done that. All right. The next step is to uh, let the project cool. And once, so with the picture paper still on it, we're letting it cool. And then once it's cool, we're going to slowly remove the butcher paper and then slowly remove the liner. And it says, there's an important note here. It says, if your design separates from the liner and remains on the blank, Remove it with tweezers. Do not remove it with your fingers because this can cause unwanted effects like ghosting or marbling. It also says to never reuse butcher paper for another project. I think that they say that because if you get any of the, of the ink onto your butcher paper, it may transfer to another project and you don't want that. And really butcher paper is really cheap. So, um, however, if no ink transferred, it seems like it would be okay. So how do we know when it's cool? I'm afraid to touch it, guys. Because <laughs> I don't want to move it, right? I don't know if you guys know. So when you watch my videos, you often comment that I make everything look easy. Well, that's because I do lots of things in the background and I make lots of mistakes that you don't necessarily see. So by the time I do the video, I try to keep it nice and simple for you. So you don't see all of my mistakes. Sometimes you see, this feels pretty cool to me. Okay, we're gonna give us a try. We're gonna slowly remove the butcher paper. Okay, I did it. And it says to, um, and we also want to then slowly remove the liner. Like, is it okay to touch it, you think? Probably, it just says to slowly remove this liner. Okay, so the little plastic part. Oh, so it's like, it's like they're together and it said to use the tweezers, didn't it? Whatever, we're just gonna do this, guys. Either it works or it doesn't. All right, so I'm gonna try to do this so you can see it. We're gonna give it a try, so I'm gonna move this. All right, so I am going to slowly remove, you might not be able to hear my voice so well right now, sorry. So I've grasped the side with the tweezers and I am pulling it off and oh my gosh, you guys, look at this. I didn't totally look at anything that bright. Can you see that? It's like totally different actually. Let me show you this. It's it's very vibrant. So this is what we started with. Can you see that okay? Okay, this is what we ended up with. That is a huge difference actually. Look, it's to it totally is turquoise too. Oh yeah, let's compare it to the box. It looks better than the box, guys. This is super vibrant. 
It's totally better than the box. I didn't expect that. I thought the box would be better. I mean, come on, packaging, right? Uh, no, this is really, really nice. I'm impressed. How pretty is that? Awesome. All right, so there is our test with the Easy Press 2. We're gonna do it again with our Easy Press. So set that there. Turn this off. We don't need to have that on anymore. And move this carefully over here. No burning tonight. All right. Here is my original Easy Press that Greg gave me for Mother's Day last year. It's the Wisteria one. All right. I'm going to turn this on. And it said 360, which I'm sure is the max. <clears throat> move this so you can see a little better. Um, I'm curious how far it goes up now. Yeah, 360 degrees is totally the max. And it said to do it for <clears throat> 120 seconds. I wonder how long you preheat it for. It says um, the original Cricut Easy Press is preheated for 15 seconds. So 15 seconds it is. So let's but let's uh let's just change this to 120 right now because that's rather that's rather loud. I didn't even know it went up that high, guys. Thank you for that tip about holding down the button. That's really helpful. <laughs> All right, 120. Okay, so while that is heating up, let me see if you guys have any questions. Kathy says to make the hearts into a pair of earrings. That's a great idea. I should totally do that. Except I don't have pair of stairs, guys, so I'd have to give them to somebody. Kathy says, can you use a regular iron? So my understanding is that you cannot because regular irons don't get hot enough. Like, so when we do iron on vinyl, we don't even go up. It's usually like 305 to 320 at max. This is at its highest at 360. So if you have an iron that gets that hot, but I don't know of any iron that gets that hot, a normal iron. So the an the official answer from Cricut is no. Okay, so Julie says Dovecraft iron gets up to 400 degrees. Julie, if you have that iron, you should totally test this for us and let us know what happens. Because um, I would love to know. Like, I mean, maybe there's, because there probably are specialty things out there. And by the way, uh, Cricut says you can use a heat press. I think the biggest issue with irons is that they have uneven heating on their plates, right? So they're made for ironing clothing and fabrics, and they don't have the same um, big plate with the ability to, like, just have an even thing. In fact, I saw a graphic that showed how the heat was distributed in the household iron versus the easy press, and it was a huge difference. All right, so we got our paper on our mat. Let's set this all off to the side here. And then we need to put our swatch blank on top of our cardstock. And we need to use our little lint roller. It says to use a fresh, a fresh piece. <clears throat> okay, I'm doing a bad job of this. <laughs> <clears throat> Maybe I need to have Greg help me with this again. <laughs> it's this tiny little lint roller. It's hard. Greg here. You help me with that. Thanks. I got this one here off Amazon. I love this thing. It's like nice and big. It comes with a little, little cover too, so you don't have to have the sticky part. Out all the time, and it came with like eight refills, and it was not expensive. And I got it like next day. I don't know if you guys. Like I live in an area where Prime, I have Amazon Prime and I get my packages the day after I order them and I don't have to pay extra other than being a Prime member. I love Prime. It is has been a game changer for my ability to order craft materials without having to leave my house. I'm just saying. <laughs> All right. I could always use this one while Greg's working on that tiny little one, which doesn't seem to be cooperating. Co I have to find where this one starts here. Sorry, you wouldn't think the thing that would hold us up would be the lint roller. All right, I got it, Greg. I got it. We're good. Just in time, you just open that up. Okay, so I'm going to get off any lint. It's so little, it just wants to stick to it. It's funny. Okay, and this is our heart right here. Put 
this over here. All right, so we've got our little swatch here and we need to um, cover it with butcher paper and then we need to preheat it for 15 seconds. Just making sure, yes, 15 seconds. So let's preheat this. So we just place it straight down without moving it around because it's always good practice to do. And I will just use this to count down to 105 and then I know it's been 15 seconds and I have to change my timer because that's easier, right? Why, thank you, Kelly. I really appreciate it. I'm happy that you like my videos. I love making videos for you guys. I really, truly do. It is fun. Okay, so it said to, we did this, to remove the butcher paper and let it cool. And always be careful. I mean, these things are hot, right? We don't want any burned fingers. I'm sure we're all very familiar with burning our fingers on hot glue enough that we do not need to burn them on an easy press or on liners or on paper. All right, so we're letting that cool. We're gonna be using this, but you know something? This has no red in it. How do we compare? We need a better comparison, guys. I don't like that one. Cause how do we compare the red? I want this one to work. Hey Greg, see if you can get the line, the negative space off of that one. That would be a much better test than this one. Thank you. And there's tweezers here. Oh, by the way, this is what it looked like. This is the one that we did. This is what was left. So I know some of you have asked me, could you reuse your um, design? And you can see the ink has really truly transferred to the material. There is barely anything left here. I mean, I'm sure you could try, but I don't think that you'd be very happy with the results. For all I know, it wouldn't work at all. I, I will try it someday and we'll find out if you could actually, like, you know, would, would it be pastel colored? Would it actually seep into the material? I don't know. That's a good question. It doesn't look to me like there's really hardly anything there at all, honestly. All right. So having any luck with that, Greg? Yeah? Okay, awesome. So we're going to let Greg fix it because I want a better test because Cricut says that the color may not be as vibrant when we use the original Easy Press. So I'd really like to be able to compare that. Thank you. You are my hero. Look, he did it. All right. So here, we'll put this one out to the side. We'll do another test with that one later. Not tonight, just another time. So here is our second heart and we're going to put it face down onto our little tiny swatch, which I know is cooled off now. All right, so that's in place. And then we cover our design with our butcher paper, which oh, it has to be larger than the Cricut Easy Press plate. That is not larger. Let's fix that. Let's see, so I have like the nine inch by nine inch one. So we're gonna cut off a nice big chunk here. There we go. All right, I'm not exactly sure yet why that's important, but my guess is that the it's so hot that it might burn the material if we don't have that butcher paper there. That's just my guess. I don't know for sure. All right. All right, you guys ready to do this? Uh, 120 seconds is two minutes. So let's just get this started. So let's just, I'm gonna just double check my timing. It's always good to double check before you do this. I am a big fan of testing. So yes, 360 degrees for 120 seconds and light pressure. All right, so let's do this. Uh, Tira says, do the t-shirts come in big girl sizes? I need a 2X for the chest area. So as a matter of fact, the one that they sent me, wherever I can't find the little label for it, it said it was a 2X. So yeah, here it is. Oh, sorry, it's an XL. So this is an XL. I don't know. 2XL. Yeah, so this is a 2XL. XXL, which as we all know, isn't quite the same as 2X, but someone has to try this on. Tamara, 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 sorry, says the key with using other products is that it's, you want sublimation of ink is for polyester, yes. And so that's what we're all going to be testing with is to see if other polyester based blanks will work with Cricut infusible ink. Again, Cricut says they um, can't guarantee the results with them. 
and that they tested a whole bunch of things and that we will be unhappy with the results. But honestly, we're just going to have to test. I am, I think, as you all know, a very big fan of testing pretty much everything I can get my hands on. In my doormat video that we did a few weeks ago, I think I did like 12 different tests of various things. Like seriously, it was a little bit insane even keeping track of it. But we're going to know which doormat worked the best in the end. Like in a year, we're going to know which one was the best. All right, there we go. 120 seconds on the Cricut Easy, original Cricut Easy Press. So again, we have to let the project cool. And then once it's cool, we remove the butcher paper and then slowly remove the liner with the design. Time, I think I let it cool for two minutes. So we're going to do it exactly the same thing. Okay, guys. Um, let's see. Vicky, you're so sweet. I love you, Vicky. I'm checking to see if there's any questions that I have missed. I'm sure I missed tons of questions, by the way. I will come back through this video afterwards to look for questions that I missed because I want to be able to answer all your questions. And of course, after we finish this, I may just sit here in front of the camera and we're going to, I'm going to answer your questions and you can just throw them all at me. Tamara says, if they sent you a t-shirt and bag, can you check to see if they're 100% polyester or what the count is? Totally. So I happen to know already that the t-shirt is 95% polyester, 5% spandex. The bag is 100% polyester. It says it right, right down here. It's probably not going to show up, but that's where it says. So 100% polyester on the bag. All right. I think still feels kind of warm. So we're going to like just give it a little bit of extra time. I'm glad you guys are finding this helpful. I really appreciate it. Madge says, do the shirts come in 4XL? I don't know yet. We probably won't know until June 16th when we can order them on Michael's online. And I will be sure to, if I find out, I will be sure to put that on my blog post, which is at jennifermaker.com slash cricket dash infusible dash ink. Um, that's where I'm keeping all of the answers to all of the questions that I find. All right, I think that we're good. So I'm gonna carefully remove the butcher paper and we can see it down here and I'll bet you anything it's gonna be the same <clears throat> because it's such a tiny little swatch. Um, I'm sure it's stuck to it. I mean, seriously, I mean, like it's just so tiny. So I'm gonna get up here and show you again so we can see what it looks like. So I'm just gonna use the tweezers to remove the liner from the little swatch. Well, would you look at that? That looks pretty awesome to me. Let's compare the two and see how they're different. I actually, I see a difference, but it could be temperature. I don't know if you guys know, but, um, well, it usually gets darker. So this is the one made on the Easy Press 2, and this is the one made on the original first generation Easy Press. So they're both really vibrant. This one is a bit more vibrant. It's a little darker. It looks like more of the ink transferred. However, this one still looks really amazing. They're actually both really bright. And honestly, this might not even be a fair test because I'm looking at it and I can see up here in the corner that this red looks like this red. Look. And those look to me, I don't know if you guys see that. I know it's kind of light. I know. Sorry, guys. Let me see if I can get them. Went to, there we go. They look um, the same to me. They actually look like the same. So awesome. This is great news. This is great news for everybody who has an original Easy Press. I'm not seeing a difference here. Um, I will have to do more testing with more different colors because different colors can transfer different. Definitely. But this, this flower right here is a little darker. In fact, if we look at the box. You can see it right here. This is a darker red and this is a lighter red. So this red here is the same as that red. The turquoise looks identical to me. The navy blue also looks identical. So yay, this is awesome. You have to do it for longer, of course, you know. Like In fact, I saw on the coasters that you had to do it for like four minutes um, with the original Easy Press. Let me turn this off before I forget. But if this is what you got and it works, it doesn't matter. It's totally fine then. Okay.
So we did our test. So you guys ready to ask me some questions? Grace says, so are the swatches that they send you polyester as well? They feel identical to the t-shirt they sent me. I am sure it's the same material. And I have some, I have actually quite a bit of extensive experience with different fibers. So I feel really confident in that answer. I'm not the one that made the swatches, so we can't say 100%, but it feels like the same material. Um, Hamdi, my iron does not go to 400 degrees, so I can't try it. But Julie, Julie, I think it was, said she had one, and I'm hoping that she'll try it when she gets some of these things. I'm not going to do the markers tonight, but I'm totally going to do them in another video. So I am looking for ideas for tutorials. So if you've got things that you want me to do, give me your ideas, your requests for tutorials. They are very important. I will actually go through and make a spreadsheet and everything, and I will do as many things as I can. I will do a tutorial on using the markers. We'll do a tutorial making an actual t-shirt, not just the swatch. We'll do one with the tote bag, the coasters, and I will try other blanks. So if anyone from Cricut is listening to me and I know that you guys have said that you want us to use your blanks and I totally get that, but you guys don't make blanks for everything yet. Okay. And I know for a fact, there's some really amazing sublimation blanks that I am dying to try. So I'm going to try them anyways, because you guys don't have ones for me to try and we'll just see what happens. Okay. We'll just see what happens. It's just fun to experiment. Holly says, are you going to do a tutorial with everything that was in your box? Yeah, totally. That's why I was being so conservative about how much I used. I'm going to make those four sheets of transfer paper last two weeks. And we're going to make as many things as I can with them. So absolutely. Just not tonight. Um, it's already after eight. I got to eat dinner at some point. Um, Claire says, do you need the biggest tape press or can you use the small with big projects? That's a great question. And you do need a heat press that is the right size for your project. So from everything that I have learned <clears throat> so far, you can't do just a part and then slide it over, right? So you can do that with iron on vinyl. I did that, in fact, in my iron on vinyl tutorial, but you cannot do that with the infusible ink. You have to press it down, leave it there, and remove it straight up. So no, no messing about sliding things. So you need to have the right size <clears throat> for it to work right. And Marie says, if you didn't have an Easy Press 2, what size would you purchase to complement your original Easy Press? Um, I would get the big one because then you know that you can do like all the projects, right? So if you have the original one, get the big one. The reason why I don't have the big one is I gave it away in a contest in December, if anyone remembers that. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> let's see. I am so interested in the markers too, yes. Uh, Deborah says, will they be giving us more than eight colors of the ink pens? You know, I bet it's, I, Cricut will give us whatever we want so long as we buy the products and use them. So if people are using these, they're going to come out with all of the colors. Uh, just think about how many colors we have for the Cricut pens that fit in our holder. I mean, there's way more colors than I'm ever going to use. So yeah, I, I think that is, as people are using them, they're going to make them for us. So let's see what other questions. What does the back look like? This is the back of the Easy Press 2 heart, and this is the back of the Easy Press original heart. So you can see that there's like a faint, you can, you can faintly see it because after all, it's like infused into this material, right? So here's the fronts, so you can compare, and here's the backs. So you can see that it's there. I mean, this is a very thin, very light material. Um, I'm sh I'll bet you anything you can't see them on the tote bag, because that's really quite a bit thicker. <clears throat> all right, all right, let's see. Beth says, will Michaels be the only place selling the paper and other supplies besides Cricut? So Michaels has an exclusive um, until October 1st, even you won't even be able to buy it on cricket.com. They're exclusive at Michael's until October 1st. And then after that, they will be in other retail stores on cricket.com. And I believe that's when they show up then or after in other countries. Cause a lot of people have been asking me when they're going to show up in the UK and Australia. Let's see. Flo says, can you layer the infusible ink? Yes, you can, but not the way you might think. You don't actually put it on, heat it, and then put another layer on the way that you might do iron on vinyl. You actually do what they call the um, 
slice and set method. So you put all of your layers onto the liner and then you transfer as a whole to your material. And I will totally be doing a tutorial on that so you can see exactly how that works. Elizabeth says, can you stretch it so we can see how it holds up? Yes, let's do that. This is the one made on the Easy Press 2. So I'm going to stretch it as far as it goes, guys. Ready? So you see I've stretched that. You can now see the, the weaving is starting to like pull there. So let's let it get back to normal. So I think you can see there that it looks exactly the same as it did before I stretched it. Um, and remember, it's got some spandex in it. The shirts do. So let's do the same thing this way. So as I stretch it, I mean, the fibers are pulling apart. I mean, they're not pulling apart like they're going to fall apart. I don't mean that, but it really is. This is really very stretchy material. So, but there's no issues at all. Like this is just, it just feels like you have a piece of fabric in your hand. There's no little edging at all. You, there's no weight to it other than the fabric itself. It's like, honestly, guys, what this looks like to me is what you buy at the fabric store when you buy a printed fabric. Like that's what it feels like. It's just printed fabric. So there's not something stuck onto it, like with iron on vinyl, it's actually in the material, which is really cool. This is really cool. Thank you guys for all the kind comments. You guys are so awesome. Looking for more questions. Um, <clears throat> you guys are welcome. So, it, so it's not in Michael's stores yet. It will be online starting June 16th. And then it will be in the physical stores on June 21st. And I will be there the morning of June 21st. Let's hope they got their act together and they got their stuff stocked. I am sure they will. My Cricut aisle is amazing at my Michael store. It is right up front. It is very clean and neat. My Michael store is actually very good. I'm, <laughs> yeah, I, I really like that. By the way, if anyone out there is listening, my Michael store is in Ann Arbor, Michigan. It's on Washtenaw. Yeah, it's the, it's the Arborland Michaels, and they are awesome. Um, let's see. Helen says, do we know if we can layer with different pattern papers, or will the second application of heat affect the first layer? So, yes, if you were to do it again, to heat it again, my understanding is it does affect it. I can't tell you exactly how yet until I try it. So you don't want to do it that way. Instead, you want to layer everything together first, and then you transfer it. And I will totally do a tutorial on that. Um, Deborah says, from what I'm seeing, the only way to get the color to the transfer paper is with markers. For example, you can't do a print and then cut from what I'm seeing. That's correct. If you really want to do something like print and then cut, you want to buy yourself a sublimation ink printer and then do print and cut on your Cricut. You totally can combine these two technologies. Most of us don't really want to go buy a sublimation ink printer. Like, I don't really want to. I don't have space for that. I don't use it enough. But if you wanted to do that kind of thing, that's what you would do. So, yeah, most of us don't need that. Most of us don't need it. Also, sometimes people who have them will print things for you if you really want. So if you know somebody, you can always ask them. I think there's even services that do that. Kim says, so you can't do half and then move the easy press and do the other half. That's correct. My understanding is you cannot do it that way and that it will affect things. I will attempt it anyways, just to see what happens. Um, but the instructions say not to do that. And that does make sense because if you move it at all, you will get what they called ghosting or marbling. And I think that's when the, I think it's when the liner moves ever so slightly, but it might be more than that too. So we need to understand how this works better. Thank you, Cindy. <clears throat> I'm not really sick anymore. I just have the lingering cough <laughs> that I can't quite get away with. Um, let's see. Can you lift and then replace on a different spot? If you do that, I don't, there's not enough. It doesn't look like there's enough ink left over for a second application. You could try it to see what happens, but it doesn't look like it. Almost all of that ink was gone. There was just a pastel ghost left over. Aunt Wanda says, so you don't have to weed the infusible ink. Um, no, I we did weed it. I used um, my weeding tool. The instructions said to use tweezers. But my understanding, it, especially with the bigger projects, is that we can kind of roll it and crack it. And weeding is much easier. It's supposed to be much easier with the transfer sheets. <laughs> 
Or my puppy really wants to get in. <laughs> okay, I'm going to scroll down and look for any last questions, and then we're going to wrap this up. Ellen says we'll be doing a video on the coasters and what they are made of. So the coasters, the round ones that I have are made of ceramic, and I'm totally going to do a video on those. If you have requests for design ideas, because you guys know I love to design things, please put them in this chat. Just come to my group at facebook.com slash Cricut Crafters. I hope you guys are all in that group. And let me know what you, um, what kind of designs you would like to see on coasters and all that sort of thing. Um, I love your suggestions. Your suggestions mean everything to me. Um, thank you guys. Awesome. Yes, Michaels will have it first, then the other retailers will have it after October 1st. All right. Awesome. I think, yes. So if you missed the video, there will be a replay. I will also edit out the little parts that were kind of weird, shorten it a little bit, see if I can remove all my coughing and put it up on YouTube as well. So there'll be a copy, a copy. There'll be a replay on Facebook and on YouTube. And I will link to it in my ultimate guide to Cricut Infusible Ink blog post as well. So it's always, this video will always be accessible to you. There are tons of answers to your questions already in that blog post. Lots and lots of stuff. I have been like gathering all of the information on all of the videos that other people have already awesomely made. So at this point, that blog post is pretty amazing. All right. Thank you so much for joining. I really, truly appreciate it. Yes, Greg has a question. What? I almost forgot I had a special announcement. Thank you, Greg. So I promised everyone I had a special announcement, right? So um, I didn't tell them already, did I? Did I tell them at the beginning? Okay, <laughs> just try to remember. No, I think that was one of our practices. Yes, because <laughs> we practiced this so I could get it right, guys. Okay, so yes, I have a special announcement. Cricut has graciously is going to graciously donate a Cricut Maker for us to give away to a member of the Jennifer Maker community. Um, Cricut CEO Ashish, who is really an awesome, awesome guy, he offered it to me personally to give to one of you. So we are going to have a contest to give away a Cricut Maker. So please watch for the details on that very soon. It'll be lots of different ways to enter and we'll do it for a little, like we'll do it over a span of time so that everybody gets a chance to enter it and it'll be awesome and cool. I love giving away things. I love seeing people who don't have the tools get them so they can make awesome things too. All right, that was my announcement. <clears throat> and we are hoping to do more live streams like this. So I need your feedback. Did you like the format? Um, do you, you know, can you hear me okay? Can you see okay? Do you have any ideas for how we can improve it? I'm always, I'm always open to all feedback. So it really is important to me. All right. I think that's it. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. I really appreciate it. And I look forward to making all sorts of really cool tutorials with the Cricut Infusible Ink products and sharing them with you. Remember, if you can tell me what you want to make, I can show you how to make it. Until next time.